Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Milk Specialties webinar on milk proteins, trends and application insights. After a short introduction to our speakers and Milk Specialties Global, we'll look at some of the marketplace trends before diving into milk proteins in more detail, looking at what they are, the functionality they provide and the applications that they work well in. Firstly, I would like to introduce today's speakers. Uh, my name is Lindsay Ormond. I'm a registered nutritionist with over 16 years experience in both industry and applied settings, particularly the protein performance and lifestyle nutrition markets. Having worked in R&D and commercial settings, my focus uh, is mainly on bringing together nutrition science, consumer insight and customer needs to help produce solutions that enable people to live healthier and perform better. I'm currently Director of Nutrition Research at Milk Specialties Global and my role here really centres around interpreting and managing research on dairy ingredients and proteins for human health and performance. And our second and main speaker today is my colleague Jen Roberts, our R&D Applications Manager here at Milk Specialties. With a master's in food science, Jen has spent over seven years in research development and innovation within the dairy industry. She's worked on all types of applications during her time in industry and her academic studies, from RTDs and RTMs to bars, yogurts, gummies, cookies, and many applications in between. At Milk Specialties, Jen focuses on creating great tasting and functional applications that incorporate our wide range of ingredients to provide customers with high protein solutions that consumers will love. Milk Specialties is a global leader in high quality functional dairy proteins. Established in 1949 as Midwest Dried Whey Inc. and becoming Milk Specialties Company, <coughs> excuse me, in 1965, we expanded into human nutrition in the early 2000s and rapidly became a major global player in this market. Milk Specialties Global is comprised of three main business units, human nutrition, animal nutrition, and contract manufacturing all of which share a singular focus to optimise health and nutrition. Within the human nutrition business unit, we provide customised protein ingredients to the rapidly growing sports nutrition, health and wellness and better for you segments of the food and beverage and supplement industries. With manufacturing facilities across the Midwest and California and corporate headquarters in Minnesota, Milk Specialties offers a broad range of value-added whey proteins, milk proteins, hydrolysates, and specialty proteins. And milk specialties, our focus is really to create high quality ingredients designed to optimize health and nutrition. We're a passionate and dedicated team, and each day we collectively explore new and innovative ways to enhance product performance and value through our extensive human nutrition portfolios. We possess the speed, execution, and passion it takes to exceed the expectations of our customers. Through our state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, we offer an extensive portfolio of milk and whey protein ingredients. We start by partnering with local dairy and cheese dairy cheese producers uh, to procure high quality raw materials that we then process into a variety of milk and whey protein ingredients. These include, include whey protein concentrates, isolates and hydrolysates, and milk protein concentrates, isolates, and micellar casein. Additionally, we specialize in value-added proteins um, and innovative product solutions through a branded range of ingredients. We're more than just an ingredient supplier, really a, a business partner. We want your business to be successful, and to do so, we begin by having the widest range of customized whey and milk protein ingredients for your nutritional and functional applications. From formulation to development, we offer everything it takes to meet your needs. Our seven dedicated human nutrition facilities uh, manufacture market leading ingredients through technology driven processes and are all SQF level two certified. Each facility is strategically located to maximize our ingredient outreach supply. Our facility in Visalia, California resides in the largest milk producing region in the US while our Minnesota and Wisconsin facilities are located in the largest combined cheese producing region. As an important part of our regional locations, we have strategic long-term partnerships with local suppliers of milk and whey to ensure business continuity and growth. And this is critical to the success of our modular business, uh, business platform. 
And middle specialties utilise these spiral wine filtration system cold temperature processing method that enables production of high quality protein ingredients while retaining the natural benefits of these proteins. Different filtration technologies such as reverse osmosis, nanofiltration, ultrafiltration and microfiltration are employed to achieve the desired composi composition and functionality of our products. By reduction and exclusion of components such as fat and lactose and concentration of naturally occurring high quality proteins. Our wide range of ingredients include whey protein concentrates, isolates, hydrolysates, uh, milk protein concentrates and isolates, casein, my, uh, including micellar casein and caseinates, carbs such as lactose and sweet whey powder, dairy fats and our value added branded ingredients range. And this includes our clear whey protein uh, under ProBev, um, BarSoft, which is our solutions for protein bars, Multipro are for high protein yogurts and Nutripro, a range of whey ingredients that provide additional enhanced health benefits. So that gives you a bit of an overview as to who milk specialties actually are. And before Jen takes us through um, milk proteins in detail, let's have a look at some trends we're currently seeing in the marketplace. So protein continues to be top of mind for consumers, and this shows no signs of changing anytime soon. Growing interest in protein supplements, especially in Asia Pacific, has led to the demand, a higher demand for proteins, um, with a compound annual growth rate of 5% in the forecast period from 2021 to 2028. The milk protein market is a key part of this, with the global market projected to reach uh, more than $5 billion by 2025. The consumer demographic for high protein products has changed in recent years, going beyond bodybuilders and gym goers, and this is likely to continue to adapt, with new consumers coming into the category moving forward. For example, WHO states that by the end of 2050, the world's population um, of uh, those over 60 years of age uh, will reach more than 2 billion, which will continue to drive the growth for protein fortified beverages. The global milk protein concentrate industry has been reported at $3 billion uh, dollars, US dollars in 2019 and is projected to reach almost 4 billion by 2027 growing at a compound annual growth rate of around of over 5% from 2021 to 2027. And the North American market accounts for one third of uh, the global market uh, due to growing interest in high protein foods and packaged functional foods. A focus on providing high quality ingredients for value added finished products and infant formula has driven the growth for US based manufacturers. And the continued growth of the protein supplements market, including RTMs, bars and RTDs, also plays into the continued demand for NPCs. And the pandemic has really focused consumers' attention on their own health and well-being and the role that several factors play, play in this. From better fitness to improved sleep, mindfulness and better nutrition, Consumers are more and more focused on improving and maintaining a good or indeed better baseline level of health than before. With some consumers having let their calorie intake and nutrition habits slip at the start of the pandemic, reports indicate that 2021 is really the year of adjusting to the new norm and improving their health. FMCG gurus, gurus Consumer Insights work highlighted that 79% of global consumers plan on eating and drinking healthier as a result of COVID-19, with 60% of global consumers um, stating they would like to improve their general health and wellness over the next 12 months. And according to Natural Products Expo, 65% of US consumers are looking for supplementary benefits from foods and beverages. So consumers are really wanting to look after their bodies and really look to what they're eating as a key part of this. Functional foods fortified with proteins have flooded the marketplace. Sports nutrition products have become pervasive in the cabinets of athletes and mums alike. And an increase in general protein consumption has been evident across many consumer groups. Personalised nutrition based on individuals' goals and desires 
have become increasingly popular along with specialised diets such as keto and low carb. And convenience and on the go snacking are really drivers for the protein fortified foods category. Now the high protein items are established in the marketplace, companies are gaining interest via novel and fun flavours and formats. Um, and companies from mainstream energy brands to organic brands are utilising milk proteins in their formulations. Some examples that we have here include high protein milk from uh, Horizon Organic, high protein ice cream, uh, cheese spread, uh, the high protein crisps from Quest and also the keto coffee from Bang. So I will now pass on to Jen who will take us through milk proteins in more detail. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Roberts, the R&D Applications Manager here at Milk Specialties Global. I've been with MSG for a little over a year and have spent my career working with dairy ingredients in various applications. Um, for now, we're going to delve deeper into milk protein specifically and their applications in finished goods. So here at Milk Specialties, we offer a range of the most natural form of milk protein powders available, milk protein concentrates and isolates. Starting with raw milk straight from the farm, we utilize gentle membrane filtration to isolate the protein before spray drying using low heat. By keeping these proteins in their native state, they retain functionality and their high quality amino acid profile, which is perfect for any applications that you want to use milk proteins in. Some features of milk protein include good dispersibility and foaming capabilities, excellent heat stability, high emulsion stability, and is a high quality protein in terms of nutrition. They also tout a handful of benefits, including exceptionally clean and neutral taste, smooth texture, protein fortification in numerous applications, and they can also be utilized to enhance satiety and weight management. All of our milk protein ingredients at MSG are available organic. You can certify them kosher and halal, they're non-GMO, and we also have lactose-free options for our milk protein isolate. Milk protein concentrate and milk protein isolate remain unregulated by the FDA, and no standard of identity exists in neither the Code of Federal Regulations nor through any other regulatory body worldwide. However, the American Dairy Products Institute, or ADPI, defines MPC and MPI as dried ultra-filtered milk with a casein to whey ratio equivalent to that of the original milk. I've again included the filtration diagram to remind you that ultra-filtration separates the protein and fat from the water, minerals, and lactose, giving you a protein concentrate. 80% of the protein in milk is made of casein. Most of the casein exists as micelles, and they're a mix of phosphate proteins, which is important for functionality. The image here is of a casein micelle. You can see the sub-micelles are those little circles, and then the protruding peptide chain, which is also called capocasein, and the little dots in the middle is calcium phosphate. And these all are all important components to functionality of the milk protein. Casein is what makes cheese possible as it precipitates out of the solution at a pH of 4.6. In cheese make, acid curdled cheeses like cottage cheese are typically fresh cheeses and are made utilizing an acid to break up micelles. As the pH of the solution is lowered, the negative charges on the outer surface of the micelles, so those kappa caseins, are neutralized, causing the casein to aggregate out of solution. This can also be done enzymatically, where an enzyme in rennet or chymosin cleaves the kappa casein protein so that the negative end of the chain dissolves and the micelles are able to aggregate. The other 20% of milk protein is whey, which is a byproduct of cheese make, often purified and utilized for sports nutrition, but it's easily denatured by heat at its native pH. As mentioned before, milk protein is kept in its native form through membrane filtration. Both whey protein and casein protein are filtered out and dried to retain their functionality and application. On the right here, you can see the typical composition of MPC70, 80, and MPI. The black bar is the protein. Clearly the isolate, which contains greater than 90% protein, is higher than the concentrated 70% protein. Purple is the lactose. As you can see, MPC70 has quite a bit more lactose than the nearly lactose-free MPI. Orange is ash or vitamins and minerals. Yellow is fat, and green is moisture. So that's the typical composition of milk proteins and isolates. Another important aspect of milk proteins is its relatively high bioavailability, especially compared to plant proteins. This chart compares 
commonly consumed proteins utilizing their PDCAS or protein digestibility amino acid score. This method determines the protein quality of different foods and compares the amount of the essential amino acids in the food to a reference pattern. This is based on the essential amino acid requirements for a two to five year old child to determine its most limiting amino acid. So the limiting amino acid in milk protein is methionine and lysine. But you can see that dairy proteins in general provide a very high PDCAS value, and those values decrease as you get into different plant sources such as pea, oats, and wheat. Now that we have a basic understanding of what milk protein is, let's discuss the functional properties of these proteins as they pertain to, to applications. First up, foamability. Foaming occurs in the presence of a gas water, a surfactant, and energy. In milk foam, milk protein acts as a surfactant that creates an interfacial film, which prevents the collapse and coalescence of gas bubbles. There are a few different ways to make milk foam. Each can be utilized to create different applications. The first I'll talk about is injection. Both cold duration and steam injection can be used to create milk foam. This process is done by sparging air through a nozzle into the milk to create a milk foam. Steam injection is often the method used by baristas in coffee shops to create beverages like lattes. Agitation is another way to create a milk foam. Whipping, stirring, and blending are all types of agitation that can create these foams. Mechanical energy typically creates large foam bubbles, which can be broken down into smaller ones through continued air agitation. Things like homemade whipped cream and ice cream are all created through agitation. And the last method is through supersaturation. Though not super common, supersaturation is based on dissolving gas into a liquid under pressure. Once the pressure is released, gas solubility is rapidly reduced, causing foam bubbles to form. Like I mentioned, this method of foam preparation isn't typically used for milk foam, but is the basis of foam formation of an aerosol whipped cream, a little like Freddy whips that you see. Some of the applications that use this, ice cream, whipped cream, milk foams, and beverages are all things that utilize foamability. Next up is heat stability. Protein structure is described through primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary arrangement of atoms in the protein. Without getting too into the weeds and the three-dimensional structure of these polymers, it is important to consider that casein has a random secondary and tertiary protein structure, almost as if it's naturally denatured. This allows for casein to be very heat-stable and ideal for shelf-stable beverages. However, age dilation over the shelf life of shelf-stable beverages can occur. This can be due to the colloidal calcium leaking out of the micelles and causing the micelles to dissociate. Although inherently quite heat stable, there are a few steps you can take to improve the heat stability even further. First is to increase the pH to seven. During heating, the pH can drop low enough to destabilize the milk protein. So ensuring that you have a high enough pH at the start of your process can help prevent any pH destabilization from occurring. Another method is to hydrolyze the whey proteins. Whey proteins are notoriously not heat stable and contribute a sulfur note to finished products due to the amino acid cysteine. Hydrolyzing whey can improve the heat stability of the protein, but can also impart a slightly bitter note. Lastly, lowering the mineral content, specifically calcium, allows for micelles to stay intact and prevents any aggregation due to calcium bridges from occurring. Some applications that rely on heat stability include ice cream, RTDs, yogurt, sauces, and soups. Another important function of milk protein is its emulsification stability properties. Emulsification is defined as a mixture of two or more immiscible substances that become one semi-stable mixture. Oil and water mixtures are notorious for their immiscibility, yet mayonnaise, dressings, and cheese all exist thanks to emulsification. Proteins in general are pretty good at emulsification, and milk proteins are particularly good at this due to their amphiphilic nature. This means they have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions that can orient towards fat or oil and water, respectively. The random coils that help with heat stability also contribute towards its ability to act as a emulsifier. Applications in which this feature is important are any that include both fat and water, but specifically ice cream, RTDs, yogurts, cheese, baked goods, bars, sauces, soups, and dressings. To close up this section on functionality, I want to briefly mention some factors that can affect the effectiveness of milk proteins in applications. Storage of milk protein powders can greatly affect the solubility and overall performance of these proteins. 
Moisture uptake is a major concern during the storage of milk proteins, and ideal storage conditions are below 25 degrees Celsius and has less than 65% relative humidity. Proper hydration of milk proteins is essential for optimal functionality. Without hydrating the proteins, there can be mouthfeel, viscosity, and sedimentation issues. Hydration of milk proteins should be done prior to the addition of any other ingredient to avoid competing for water. There's a simple hydration test that can be done via centrifugation that can ensure proper hydration as well. Lastly, the final concentration of protein is dependent on what application type it's going in. Each application has its limitations and some formulation challenges are needed to ensure a robust finished formula. As a final section to this webinar, I'm going to talk about some specific applications that can utilize milk proteins. Milk proteins are quite versatile, and here's a general overview of the different milk proteins that can be used in applications. I'll dive deeper into the role milk protein has on various applications and go over some current products in the market for each category as well. First up is milk protein and RTDs. Since milk proteins are heat stable, they're suitable for atypically processed beverages. This can extend the shelf life and provide a nutritious product that doesn't require refrigeration. Milk protein also provides viscosity to beverages, which creates a rich and enjoyable mouthfeel that aids in satiety. Milk proteins also provide emulsification and stabilization in RTD beverages. This helps reduce the use of chemical stabilizers and offers a cleaner finished goods label. And lastly, milk proteins and RTDs provide a clean way to fortify beverages. They're great for providing a creamy base to chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry shakes. So here are some examples of protein RTDs in the market today. And these all utilize milk protein. You can see that protein ranges from 5.5% protein to all the way up to 9% protein with the finished good. And you can get fun flavors like pumpkin spice that you see in a premier shake or the Alani's Fit Shake that is in cookies and cream flavor, muscle milk coffee house, coffee cafe latte, and Quest salted caramel. You can see that milk protein lends itself to a lot of different flavor formulations in addition to protein concentrations in RTDs. Moving into yogurt. Milk proteins contribute to the texture of yogurt. Specifically, whey protein binds water, which aids in an increased creamy viscosity. The protein also helps with decreasing synergesis, which is a separation of liquid from yogurt that you sometimes see at the top of a yogurt cup. The mild and sweet flavor of milk protein makes it easy to formulate yogurt with, and the emulsification and stabilization properties of milk proteins can help replace stabilizers in yogurt formulations, creating a cleaner label and a more stable end product. In this table to the right, you can see the recommendations of different dairy ingredients and different types of yogurt. In addition to milk and whey protein, you can see the Milk Specialties branded Case Pro protein is also helpful for yogurt make. Case Pro is a micellar casein, which differs from milk proteins in the fact that the ratio of casein to whey is modified to concentrate the casein up higher. The higher concentration of native caseins can further improve heat stability and emulsification properties. There are many types of yogurt in the market today, ranging in texture and protein concentration. Here's a list of a few of those available and their respective protein content. Creek contains quite a bit of protein, almost triple that of a French style. And drinkable yogurts are another popular yogurt type worldwide. Also, kefir, another fermented dairy drink made from kefir grains, is gaining popularity globally. The next application is bars. Protein bars are becoming an ever-increasing way for consumers to add extra protein to their diet, provide a nutritious snack, or even replace a meal. Milk proteins in this application help with water binding, thereby decreasing water activity and helping create a microbiologically safe product. It can also help provide a shorter texture in a bar. The shelf life of a bar with milk protein is lengthened due to the softer texture that milk protein lends to the finished good. Milk proteins can also help reduce any age-related browning or discoloration of bars. And lastly, milk proteins provide a great nutritive value to typically sugar or fat-laden products. The perfect way to add some dimension, protein, and fun texture to a bar is to extrude in crisps. These crisps can be made using milk protein as well. In fact, up to 90% milk protein can be added in extruded crisp formulations. Milk protein also helps with texture and processing by aiding in the expansion during extrusion. Again, the mild and sweet dairy notes that 
milk protein provides helps it become the perfect base for both sweet and savory extruded snacks. Like I mentioned, these protein extruded products are perfect for bar inclusion, but they can also be used alone for high protein cereals and snacks. Some protein extruded products on the market now are products like High Key and Magic Spoon's protein cereals, protein chips, and bars featuring protein crisps in a Rice Krispie like format. Next is milk protein and ice cream. Milk protein can lend a lot of functionality to ice cream. It helps with the foaming during freezing to create stable air cells that help prevent shrinkage over the shelf life. It can also provide a creamy and smooth mouthfeel by increasing viscosity and maintaining small ice crystals. Again, the emulsification properties of milk protein can help create a cleaner label finished good, and the nutritional benefits of milk protein addition are great for creating healthier for you frozen desserts. As I'm sure you're aware of, protein fortified ice creams have taken the freezer aisles by storm. Ranging from products that are minimally fortified, like Rebel, with 5 to 13 grams of protein per pint, to higher fortification levels like Fairlife Light Ice Cream and Enlightened Ice Cream, featuring 23 grams of protein per pint. The last application I'll talk about today is cheese. Milk protein is great for non-standard identity cheese types. They can improve the texture by helping with the multiplication of fat in the matrix. It can also aid in the stretching of cheese made specifically for pizzas, and it also helps control and modify the melting properties of cheese. Due to their mild nature, they again provide a clean dairy note to cheese applications as well. And an additional benefit is that milk proteins can increase the yield of non-SOI cheeses. Looking at this table to the right, you can see that MPC is great for processed cheese and cheese bat yield for non-SOI cheese, whereas whey protein concentrate doesn't perform as well. However, our branded ingredient, Case Pro, is excellent at providing functional properties to processed cheese and increasing cheese bat yield from non-SOI cheese. Let us help you. Milk Specialties Global has a strong R&D team that can help you and your company bring your idea to market. With strong process and product innovation teams, deep relationships with external research organizations, and a network of co-manufacturing partners, we're here to provide the assistance you need. Our R&D team can help with everything from innovation and formulation support to taste and mouthfeel improvement. We're the experts in concepts to commercialization. We thank you for listening to our webinar on milk proteins and hope you found the information useful. We have now reached the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Please submit your questions in the question box and we will answer your questions. Thank you.